I mean, this will 100% smooth everything out and just make it look like there's no pores and it's seamless and flawless. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. <laughs> I have a very sad lab that wants me to play with her. And instead I have to film, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is such an exciting video because this is a collaboration video with four other very, very talented makeup artists that also have YouTube channels as well. I have Nina L, Makeup by McKenna, Giselle Ramirez, and then I also have Frenchie Makeup. They're all very, very talented ladies. So each one of these four ladies does makeup artist related content, pretty similar to me. And we kind of all have the same personalities. So if you guys really wanna see other people's perspectives and other people's artistry skills definitely go ahead and check out all four of their channels and follow them on instagram because i'll link all those too so i gathered these group of ladies about a week ago and i individually reached out to all of them on instagram and i'm like hey do you want to collaborate together and do like a makeup kit favorites would not live without kind of products video all of them were down i decided to start a group chat and now we're here <laughs> everybody's videos will be up by the time you guys are seeing this video i'm actually personally really excited to see all their videos after this so the very first product that i want to talk about with you guys is this toner right here this is the fresh rose deep hydration toner. Fresh is a clean beauty brand, meaning that they don't have any fragrances or harsh chemicals. I absolutely love Fresh as a brand, but specifically like this toner is amazing. This is made with rose fruit extract, it removes impurities and softens the skin. This is the most hydrating toner that I've ever found in my whole entire life. The rose inside of it calms down any irritation, especially for people with rosacea. As you can tell though, there is actual rose petals inside of this toner, which means that any fragrances that you actually are smelling are derived directly from those rose petals and directly from the ingredients. And again, very, very hydrating. I mean, usually toners are very astringent. They strip all the moisture out of your face pretty much because they're very alcohol or very harsh, but this one does not. I mean, I've used it on the driest of skin before. That actually physically have dry patches and somehow it's softened and smoothened the look of dryness. It has never ever irritated any of my clients. The only people I think that would obviously not vibe well with this is people that are allergic to rose water. But besides that though, seriously has worked on every single one of my clients. I mean, I love to pick up products personally that are very universal that suit different skin types. This guy has been a staple product in my kit for about the last three years. As makeup artists, we're always just switching and changing out products inside of our kit all the time. So to have something stay in our kits for for three years straight, you know it's a good product. Then going on to primers, the ultimate favorite primer that I've ever found. You guys have probably heard it and seen it all over the place, but guys, it's hyped up for a reason. This is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. If you guys are looking for a very universal primer, this works on oily skin, dry skin, combination skin, any type of skin that you have. With oily skin especially, a lot of people will automatically go to those very like silicone-y, slippery kind of primers. But if you think about it, your oils are already slippery anyways. So if you put on a silicone, based primer, all you're gonna do is just slip and slide those oils all over the place and then your makeup's not gonna lay nice on top of it. That is why I highly recommend, especially for oily skin types, to get like a gripping kind of primer. But since it does have hydrating properties inside of this as well, it does really well for dry skin too. You would think that the gel texture would make the product stick to that one area and wouldn't be able to blend out, but that's not the case with this guy. And maybe it's because I use a damp sponge and press it in instead of like blending it and swirling it around with a brush, but I do really like this guy and there's not very many people that I've spoken to that don't like this. Overall, just really universal primer, good for all skin types. I absolutely love it. I'm going to talk about my ultimate favorite foundation. If you guys have been on my channel for a little bit, you guys will probably know which one I'm going to say. It's the Face Atelier Ultra Pro Foundation. It is actually a Canadian brand. Because it isn't a well-known brand and it's not very commercialized, a lot of people normally don't know about it. But almost every single makeup artist I think has heard about this by now. This is the most amazing foundation and this is the foundation that I've had in my kit for the last five years of me being a makeup artist. And that is saying something. I've never had any doubts about not carrying this thing in my kit. Like it's a staple foundation. Now let me tell you guys why this isn't an ordinary foundation. It is a silicone based foundation. Silicone foundations automatically will even out and diminish the look of pores and fine lines and wrinkles and just make everything look a lot smoother. I do carry all silicone foundations in my kit just so I can intermix all of them without worrying about the formulations separating and looking weird together. 
I found that silicone foundations perform 100% better than water-based foundations. Then it is also a medium to full coverage foundation. I love to have my foundations be as universal as possible so they fit multiple different skin types, just so I don't have to carry around like hundreds of different foundations. Like nobody wants that. I've seen makeup artists that do it and I don't know how their backs even survive. I like to have ones that are all satin finish foundations. Satin finishes are between dewy and matte, which means that by having a satin finish foundation, if you alter your primer and then also how you set it, that will determine how your makeup will turn out. Also, the other thing about this that I almost forgot to mention is this thing has a primer built into it, so you don't even technically need to use a primer. It cuts out a step if you don't have a lot of time, say you're working on TV and film set or something, and you maybe only have like 15 minutes to get your talent ready. This guy's the way to go. I'm telling you right now, it's very blendable. It's really easy to use. Then the last thing that I want to point out to you guys that makes this a lot different than normal foundations is they have color adjusters. Color adjusters are meant to adjust the undertones of foundations, depending on your client's skin tone. Color theory is a big thing inside of the makeup artist realm and it's important to know the color wheel, go back to basics and figure out what your complementary colors are, what your secondary colors are, what your tertiary colors are. The first color adjuster I have is this white one, which is the shade zero. It is a completely pure white shade and you use this to lighten up any foundations. Then I also have the shade blaze, which is this one right here. This is a mustard yellow kind of color. It's meant to put warmth back in the foundation. So say if somebody has a little bit more of a yellow yellow warm undertone, then you can add a little bit of this. Also, you only need like a little bit of this at a time. They're very, very pigmented, like pure pigments inside of here. Then the other one I have is the shade Heat. It's like a warm terracotta red kind of color, I would say. And this is to make undertones a little bit more on the cool side or a little bit more pink. So this one is, as you can see, a greeny olive sort of base. Not super green, but just enough to obviously get a little bit of the undertone going in your formulation. Sometimes people have very strong range undertones and you don't quite know what it is. The olive adjuster has been heavily helping me out with that. And then the last foundation adjuster that I have is this blue shade. This is what it looks like. And this one is to neutralize out any undertones and make them more neutral. I feel like if beginners did get a hold of this, they would learn color theory really freaking quick. <laughs> so yeah, would highly recommend the Face Atelier Pro Foundations. The next complexion product that I have is my favorite concealer. And it's actually the only liquid concealer that I have inside of my kit. It's the Too Faced Born This Way multi-sculpting concealer and this one is absolutely amazing. Of course, as makeup artists, we can't use the doe foots directly because it does have like this really large doe foot. But if you are a normal consumer, then you can obviously directly use this on your face. Facts about this concealer really quickly. It's a satin finish concealer, a little bit more on the dewy side, a little bit more on the hydrating side. But I personally like my concealers to be a lot more hydrating than matte. Like I absolutely hate using the Tarte Shape Tape concealer on people. And I know people are like, yeah, that's my tried and true. Like don't mess with it. You know, like I love my Shape Tape and I get it. But at the same time though, it's like, I don't like using using that concealer just because it's so, so drying underneath the eyes, especially if somebody does have dry skin already, or if you have mature skin, it'll just settle right into those wrinkles. With the Too Faced Born This Way, I feel like they hit a really, really happy medium with this one. It's dewy, but it's not overly dewy to the point where it's just like slip and sliding and it doesn't provide that much coverage. This is a full coverage concealer. Like it will cover anything that you have. Everybody always asks what concealer that I put on people because my under eyes on clients never look very drying or anything. Even on mature skin types. This guy has been in my kit for the last five years as well. It's been in there as long as the Face Atelier foundations have been. Also, a lot of the deeper shades can be used for contouring, which is really nice. Highly would recommend picking up the Too Faced Born This Way concealers, the multi-use concealers, if you guys haven't already. The next complexion product that I have is my favorite powder that I own, and this is the Huda Beauty Loose Baking Powder. I do not use this to bake, despite what the name is. I usually like taking this on a damp sponge, and I'll just press a little bit of it underneath the eye, but completely completely blend it out. I will not let anything sit there because that does heavily dry out the under eye areas, especially. Now I do have the ones that are the original ones, which means they do have like a light kind of scent to them. It's kind of florally, but I think Huda Beauty just released, or if not, they're releasing pretty soon the unscented versions of these, which I'm going to be switching out because I know that fragrances does irritate some people. I haven't had any issues with it so far and I've used it on the most sensitive skin types, but I do want to have unscented products completely because I don't want to be irritating anybody. I guess if 
you know, you know, but it just has this way of not making your under eyes, especially look very dry, very heavy. It sets over concealer really nicely and locks everything into place. It also mattifies too. So anybody who's really oily locks in those oils and makes you pretty waterproof for a pretty long amount of time. And it also doesn't crease either. Like it doesn't make anything crease. It just sets everything where it is. Seriously the best powder I've ever found. If you guys have pores, especially like around your cheek area, or anything. I mean, this will 100% smooth everything out and just make it look like there's no pores and it's seamless and flawless. Definitely check out this powder if you guys have not already. Huda Beauty did it right. They definitely did. <laughs> Going on to another Huda Beauty product that I really like. This is the Huda Beauty Glowish Bronzer. I don't know why these aren't more popular. Everybody always uses the same like powder bronzers and I feel like they're the ones from like Anastasia or NARS. If you guys have not tried these Huda Beauty Glowish Bronzers, you're sleeping on it because it's such a great bronzer. Mine are are depotted right now so I don't have a complete powder to show you but this one is the deepest shade and as you can tell they have this marbleized kind of finish to them it gives a lot of dimension to the skin and it's just not one flat matte color they also are called glowish bronzers because they have a little bit of luminosity to them which in turn will make your makeup naturally look like it's blended in a little bit better that's why it's harder to blend out matte eyeshadows than it is shimmer so it's the same concept with this like it's very very user friendly because it doesn't pack on a lot of pigmentation right away. It's definitely one of those bronzers that you have to take a brush and keep like going back a few times to build up the intensity that you want. But I kind of like bronzers that are like that a little bit more. It makes it safe for people that are a little bit more heavy handed with bronzers. It just makes everything blend out really seamlessly. It creates this healthy looking glow on people's skin and makes it look very like sun kissed. Absolutely love the shade ranges. They have amazing color tones in them. I own every single color that the brand carries. I would highly recommend the Glowish bronzers if you guys have not tried them. They're honestly one of my favorite products and I use them on every single person. Now moving on to my favorite highlighter and I know you guys are going to think it's the soft and gentle highlighter by MAC and it's really not. Um, I've found a new favorite and this is an overly hyped product and it has been for a little bit but it's for good reason. This is the Dior Backstage Highlighting Quad in the shade 001 Universal. Used mine so much guys that I broke the hinge off of this but I'm still using it. <laughs> so yeah this thing completely separated and I'm probably going to have to get a new one here pretty soon. It's very universal. I mean, I can take this one palette with me and this will work on every single skin tone. It has a really, really light white kind of shade. Then there's this champagne shade here. There's a really, really deep bronzy shade, which also looks really good as an eyeshadow. And then this really rosy tone that can also be used as like a blush topper or even just mixed in as a highlighter. So what I like to do is I usually like to combine all these shades together and use them as a highlighter, especially for people who have like medium skin tones, it makes the prettiest shades. So that's what the white one looks like. Then you also have the champagne shade, which I get a ton of use out of. That's the champagne. Then you have the bronzy shade, which I've recently been really loving. I feel like I'm gonna be using this a lot more once we start getting into the summertime, just so I can use like it for body and everything. Then we also have this amazing pink shade, which I like using as a blush topper, but I also love combining it with all the other shades too. As a makeup artist, I wanna carry least amount of products as I possibly can because I don't wanna be carrying everything underneath the sun with me that's not necessary. So once I finish up my MAC highlighters, I think I'm only going to be carrying this guy because this seriously is good for all skin tones. The formulation is also really nice too. It's not like a really, really chunky glitter. It's kind of like that wet looking sheen highlighter. And those are the highlighters that I love. I love using stuff like this. And again, love it that it's in this universal quad so you can just carry it around with you and you're 100% set for any skin tone that's in your chair. Okay, going on to some lip products that I really, really like. These are the Sephora Lip Stories lipsticks. They look like this. They all have these cardboard kind of packaging. Now I love the formulation of these, don't get me wrong, but with lipsticks, I feel like you can pretty much pick any brand that you want um, and have it work for you. But I wanted to specifically talk about these because of the shades. I work primarily in bridal and a lot of the times I get requests for a lot of like mauve nude colors and it's hard to find like a universal mauve color for people. So these two are my ultimate favorite bridal nude mauve colors. This one is by far my favorite to use alone. It It'll be a little bit too dark for people that have very fair skin, but if you're my skin tone or deeper, it'll work really well. This is the Sephora Lip Stories lipstick in the shade We, which is number three. I, of course, depot mine, so that's why it kind of looks like a mess. But as you can tell, it's this mid-tone mauve sort of color with a little bit of brown inside of it. And I've been recently mixing brown colors into neutralized lipsticks a little bit more, just so they're not super vibrantly like peach or pink or anything. But let me go ahead and actually swatch this. Tell me that isn't the most 
pretty color for bridal. And this is a cream formulation, by the way. And then this one I'm gonna show is a matte formulation. So this is in the shade Love Love, which is number seven. And then as you can tell, this one is almost like a neutral sandy sort of tone, but it has a little bit of like a pink kind of tint to it. Now, depending on the skin tone that you put this on, it might come off a little bit gray looking. That's why you gotta be a little bit careful about using it on its own. But with other things, it neutralizes things so freaking nicely. That is what that shade looks like. It's kind of like the same color as my shirt. I would say it's like a taupey kind of color. Let me go ahead and mix the two of them together and I'll show you guys what amazing color this makes. So I swatched it right here on the back of my palm here. Look at how freaking pretty that tone is though. Such a pretty bridal color. That's why whenever you mix these two together, it makes like the perfect tone. So ultimate favorite two colors for bridal, either mixing them, using them alone, it's nice. And yeah, definitely get number seven, which is Love Love, because that will neutralize out like any color, especially if it's like too vibrant and you just want to tone it down a little bit, use that one. Then still on the topic of lips, I want to share my favorite lip liners with you guys. And this is because of the formulation and also the colors. So these are the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Liners. And I absolutely love the formulation of these. I am a huge fan of using gel lip liners as opposed to pen pencil lip liners. I just feel like they glide on a little bit better. They don't pull and they don't tug, especially when people have really dry lips during the winter time. I specifically like these two shades that I have right now. Guys, the normal pencils are like this big. If you get them down to the nubs, you know that you like them a lot. These are my ultimate two favorite that I keep repurchasing and keep running out of the quickest. So this one is in the shade Love Trap. And again, I get asked for bridal nude shades a lot that are in the more mauve family. Isn't that not the perfect bridal nude shade? For a lip liner, and then you use the combo of the Sephora lip stories. Perfect combination, let me tell you. So yeah, I have Love Trap here. And then this one is in the shade Iconic Nude. I feel like everybody likes this one. That is what it looks like. That one's a little bit more of like a mauve kind of tone. And that one's a little bit more of a brown tone. Either way though, these both are such stunning lip liners and they're so, so waterproof. Like they do not budge very easily. As you can see, I was just rubbing that and like they do not budge. They have such great tones to them. I mean, I think I own about like six different shades of the Charlotte Tilbury lip liners and I'm obsessed guys. Then the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about, these are my ultimate favorite lashes. You guys are probably going to be like, this isn't makeup, but you know what? I couldn't do my job without these, so I'm including them in here as the very last one. And these are the Ardell Naked Lashes. These are what the Ardell Naked Lashes look like. So Ardell, of course, knows how to do eyelashes. We all know that. We all are a fan of the Demi Wispies and of the Wispies, but guys, if you guys have never tried the Ardell Naked line, please try it. These are the most natural, comfortable feeling lashes that I've ever personally worn and also tried to apply to other people. As we all know, the thicker the band on the lashes, the harder it is to apply and then the more glue that you usually have to apply to make it stick and it doesn't feel as comfortable. So these ones have a very invisible band, if you can tell. There's not like a straight line that's going across. All of these are just individual notches in one strip. A lot of my previous clients have always had like bad lash experiences or bad lash applications where it just feels like the lash is super heavy or it's weighing down their whole entire eye and they just want to rip them off by the end of the night. But almost every single one of my clients I put these on are like, oh my gosh, like I've kind of forgot they were there and they just lasted the whole entire night. Yes, that is exactly what I want to hear because I have brides that have them on for like 12 plus hours and I don't want them having to worry about them falling off or feeling heavy or uncomfortable throughout the day because they can't enjoy their day if they're uncomfortable, you know? I think there's like four different styles of the Ardell Naked Lashes, but I specifically really like two of them. So I personally have the style 420, which is what I showed you here. So 420 are the ones that are all the same length going across, but they're just a little bit shorter. These ones I say would kind of replicate the way that lash extensions look and they do. I mean, they're very fluffy, they're very wispy and that's what's separating them from just like the Ardell Demi Wispies. And a lot of people are going to say that the Demi Wispies are like the end all be all and they look very natural. No, no, no these look natural. <laughs> and they, again, have enough volume to them that you can see them, but they just look very fluffy and very wispy. Before I move on with this, I will let you know that for some odd reason, Ardell's lashes and their manufacturing for these are super inconsistent. Like there are some that look very plastic and very fake, and it could be the exact same style. Pick up the ones that are more fluffy, especially in the 420s. Then I also have the 421s, which look like this. So these are the exact same length going straight across, although they are a lot longer, obviously, than the other ones, and they have a little bit more volume. And these are the ones that I'm actually wearing right now. So let me get up close. 
but like look at how natural these look. You can hardly tell where the band of my lash actually is because they have such an invisible band. Obviously my eyelashes are like very short. So if you've been on my channel for a little bit, you probably have noticed that I'm wearing them. <laughs> but if you guys didn't know that I didn't have long eyelashes, you probably would not even guess that these would have been false lashes, but they are. And that is the end of the 10 makeup kit favorites would not live without products. Make sure that you go to all the other four artists channels after this and see all their makeup kit favorites. And don't forget to like their videos as well and also subscribe to their channel channels, all their channels, Instagrams, and all the links for the products that I mentioned are going to be in the description box down below. So definitely go ahead and check out everything. Hope you guys really enjoyed. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys haven't already, and also like the video if you did. As always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.